Have you ever heard the phrase go fast or go home? Well, the concept behind this ship, with big engines and a bunk in the back, seems to be why not do both? I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the Origin 350R. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing, with the 350R as one of the currently flyable ships. The 350R is a solo ship, described as a racer, but don't be fooled, this ship is also fairly well armed. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. This review is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And you gain entry to your 350R by opening a ladder on the left or port side of the ship. This takes you up into the main body of the 350R itself. Out to your right is a bed, and a feature of the panoramic glass roof. Directly to your front as you enter is a small cubby with a toilet in. And then out to the front of the ship is the pilot's chair. Finally, at the back underneath the ship is a deployable cargo bay, with four cargo units of storage. Part 2 – Combat Performance Much like her little brother, the 300i, the 350R is armed with triple size 3 weapons. That's comparable to many smaller fighters, and not to be sniffed at. In addition, there is a size 2 missile on each wing. Usually, at this point in the review, we talk about how it's possible to swap out the weapons per your preference, so if you're a big fan of ballistic repeaters, like this pilot is, you can opt for those. However, with a 350R, the other components would also need to be replaced, such as power and cooling before you simply replace the weapons. In a combat situation, the 350R combines for a fairly reasonable amount of stopping power, for example, you'll often find if you're head-on against a small ship, it'll be dead before you get to the merge. Although the default weapons are on fixed mounts, the 350R is nimble enough that you can put rounds on target. You'll want to take a little more care against targets with more firepower, largely due to the twin size 1 shield generators on the 350R leaving much to be desired, so don't expect to take a lot of hits. But, in fairness to the 350R, you probably don't buy a high-speed racer to get shot at and tank damage. One thing to be wary of in combat is any obstacles around you. Whilst the 350R is fast, it's a bit slower to dodge any debris or asteroids, which, if you're not careful, could lead to a slightly embarrassing explosion. Part 3 – Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, the 350R is absolutely excellent. As you might expect from Origin ships, the canopy is unobstructed, with clear view above and to the sides, with nothing to get in the way of you feeling connected to the outside world. One slight downside is the reflectivity of the glass, especially noticeable at night or in space, which does distract a little bit. As you might expect from a racing ship, the 350R is incredibly fast in a straight line. In contrast to the M50, the 350R seems to be much more tuned towards pointing forward and going like a rocket ship, whereas the M50 feels more nimble in the turns. You'll notice that when flying the 350R, especially when carrying speed, as the thrusters are considerably outmatched by the performance of the engines at the back. You may also notice that the 350R rolls a lot better than it yours, which means you'll end up flying the ship much more like a performance fighter jet, especially in coupled mode. That can be incredibly satisfying for pilots who fly other flight sims, it's a great experience, but also, notably, 
you lose a little manoeuvrability when compared to some of the smaller racers. Planet side, the speed of the 350R shines. Even at space combat manoeuvre speeds, it handles very well and still covers distance quickly. And in a vacuum, this is even better still. It's worth being cautious when landing the 350R, not because it's difficult to land, but because braking performance is considerably outmatched by acceleration, and because the landing gear is wheels, which means that you may often roll forward. After many a landing or overshoot, the best practice seems to be to come to a halt above your desired landing location and then strafe down, which adds a little time and feels like a shame for a ship that's otherwise designed to be fast. Usually, at this part of the review, we explore how slow the Quantum Drive is, and the drive on the 350R is about as slow as it gets, but in this instance that might make sense, because it also gives the 350R considerable range, pretty much able to cross the Stanton system, and also next to no cooldown once it's out. Given that the Quantum Drive is to take you to your racing destination rather than to race there, that might make sense. Part 4. Operating Costs The 350R is pretty cheap to operate. Across repair, rearming and refuelling, you're unlikely to spend more than a thousand credits, even if you've been firing the missiles. There are four cargo units of onboard cargo storage, but being realistic, that's barely worth it. I expect the physicalised hold would be more useful for ferrying your own luggage, and you're unlikely to make any meaningful returns by trading with a 350R. You can do box delivery contracts, however, using the internalised space, and given the straight line speed of the 350R, you could work through those fairly quickly and chain together a profit. Additionally, the combat performance of the 350R is no slouch, happily able to take many of the mercenary and bounty hunter missions and produce a profit. As for hydrogen fuel usage, although the 350R does seem to have a fuel scoop, unless you have a lot of spare time, you won't want to use it. And it does drink hydrogen fuel at a reasonable rate if you're hitting the speeds, but you're likely to get well over a couple of hours usage from that. More likely your character will get thirsty long before you need to refuel. Part 5. The Verdict The 350R is a beautiful ship. If you've seen other reviews here, you'll know I'm a big fan of Origin ships. The interior feels premium, and the use of the panoramic roof really helps you to enjoy the beauty of Star Citizen. The 350R also does a decent job at many tasks that you throw at it, from being able to complete box delivery missions, to crossing the verse, to dealing with small to medium combat threats. It has a bed for logging out in, and is relatively easy to fly. So I like the 350R, but here's the rub. It comes in at $125, or in-game for 1.6 million Alpha UEC, and both of those are high price points for what you get. I'd be much more tempted by the 300i, which does a lot of the same things for considerably less up front, or even the newer 100 series. So if you're a big fan of the 350R, I'd say go ahead and buy in-game, but no, you're probably paying extra for the premium. Otherwise, sadly, you're probably better spending on something else. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my video reviews of the racing ships of the M50 and the Misk Razor, as well as the 300i, which is a much cheaper option in the 300 series. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching.